Taking out the pole for the first TM Lights race at Road Atlanta is Nathan Ferguson driving for Leonid Roderick's team, car number four. He gets a good jump off the line over Sakura Matoko in car number 40. And you'll notice on the inside of row two is Roger Kendall in car number two. Of course, Kendall was highly touted to win uh, the season opener in Las Vegas, but he had problems on the, on the start of the race and didn't uh, really even get going. He started the race three laps behind and things only got worse from there. Looks like he's turned his luck around so far here at Road Atlanta. Oh, never mind. I spoke too soon. There he goes around. Oh, this could be bad. Oh, oh good job there by Kendall. You notice he's keeping it on the curb, waiting for everyone to go by, and he uh, gets pegged by uh, Ali Collada there in the 27 car. Here's uh, Kendall's teammate, the 7 car, German Bernard Strauss, as he goes around, gets Axel Andersson in the 997. And uh, he goes further back in the field. Also in the same first lap, the 05 car, Andrew Kanasa, gets turned around by the uh, 54 CRPR car of Dexter Hamlet of England. So we got a lot of chaos in the opening lap. I don't think Hamlet and Kanasa got a whole lot of damage out of that, though. And just without Roger Kendall's, they couldn't get worse. Mike Anders in the 51 car decides to try to go three wide um, and pin three wide in two lanes. Pinches Dermot Scott, Cameron Taylor. And, of course, Kendall off the track. I don't really see what the point of this move was. You'll notice the 51 car of Andrews cuts over on the 10 car of Dermot. Scott doesn't give Scott any room at all. Sends himself, Roger Kendall, and Cameron Taylor off the road. Now, I don't know what Mike Andrews is thinking, but wake up! Jacob Card pits the EV racing car after the end of the first lap. I don't really know why, though. Uh, looked pretty routine. Here's Quan Ching in the start of the second lap, and Tiffany Matthews running side by side. And Matthews gets into the China, uh, the Chinese driver. Jing goes across the track and hits Archer Harris in the 79 car. So uh, even more drama at the start of this one, and uh, the S Tech car goes further back in the field. Here is the points leader and the winner of the first race in Las Vegas, Brian Morris of Canada, currently running fifth. Good start to the race for him. Roger Kendall, despite running last on the racetrack, just set the third fastest lap of the race. So clearly there's a lot of speed in this two car, but he's a long way back. This is actually the fastest car on the track. Fourth place car, French-Canadian Claire Alcier. Uh, she's driving for the Lynx development team, the Lynx women's team, rather. And uh, we'll see how she goes today. She's trained as a road racer. Here's Eric Molina, the 21 car, and Justin Robinson in the 11 car for Unit 11 Racing. And Molina is the uh, next car to spin. Comes down, oh, doesn't look like he hits anybody else. Here's uh, Lang Chang Kun, the six car. He gets around Axel Anderson, breaks way too late, goes into the sand trap. Here's like Durbin, the 08 car on lap six of 30, as he loses it, gets John Jefferson in, in the uh, 37 car, and Joseph Cummings in the 04. Mike Anders in the 51, and oh, poor Cameron Taylor's been in everything so far this race. It's not of his own doing. And, um,. Uh, well, that's enough of that. Here is four-time GT champion Bobby Dollar in the 98 car. A rookie in this series. He gets held up a bit by John Jefferson. He's in third place. Claire Ossier and Brian Morris say, well, I see an opportunity to take a position, and we will do that. As Ossier makes a move around on the front straight, and Brian Morris in the 14 car follows suit. Ossier moves over back into the racing line. And uh, I think uh, Alcir has forgot that Morris is on the way. Morris has got a bit more experience than Alcir in uh, cars like this. As uh, Alcir gets, uh, has to deal with the uh, 14 car. And here's Sakura, Mat Sakura Matoko, the uh, 40 car, running in second. Mike Andrews, uh, more drama for him as he goes off the road. And okay. Uh, clearly not paying much attention uh, is Mike Andrews. That uh, very epic battle for third between Alcir and Morris has brought Ryan Griffin in the 18 car into the mix. Now, Griffin's teammate, Ike Durbin, just ran Tiffany Matthews in the 16 car off the road as we're watching Justin Robinson. Looks like Matthews got it all gathered up, though. Now, Robinson is running in seventh place, and... Are you kidding me? Ah, uh, that left me speechless right there. Tiffany Matthews, clearly, after being run off the track by the 08 car of Ike Durbin, no relation to uh, former Master Cup champion Tony Durbin, just cuts straight across the sand trap, doesn't really hold the brakes. You see, Ike Durbin's a lap down now. I don't really know what he was doing there, and uh, 
Tiffany Matthews just gasses it up and clearly proves that two wrongs don't make a right, hits the end of the bridge, and takes out the 11 car, who she was actually racing for position, which, uh, frankly, I think is a little uncalled for. First mechanical DNF of the race is Nasa Tsunamachi in the 5 car. Lap traffic uh, is going to cost the uh, number 4 car of Nathan Ferguson the lead to, Sak to Sakura Matoko, but Matoko is going to lose the lead after contact with the lap car of Brandon LaRoe in the Afterburner Motorsports 33 car. Here's Brian Morris and Bobby Dollar doing battle for third. They've pretty much been this way, but oh! Morris is overshoots the turn, takes himself and Alcira out. And Alcira spins around, and she's going to get hit by another car. Morris just looks like he overdrove that, but it looked like he and the 98 car weren't exactly uh, racing each other too uh, cleanly there. Even still, uh, Alcira gets run into by the one car, and of course car number one means that's the defending series champion. Thurston Blood. The Englishman is, uh, well, so far it doesn't look like it's going to be a great title defense, but there's a, it's a 17 race season, so he's uh, clearly got enough time to make that up. Nathan Ferguson in the number four car is now coming up to the back of Mike Andrews, and I don't think he's terribly happy about it. Mike Andrews is costing him tons of time, but uh, Ferguson finally gets around. Uh, Mike Andrews and uh, well, he's gonna want to clear him as soon as possible because Mike Andrews clearly is racing him uh, awful hard for someone who's uh, being lapped here Anyway, here we are all the way back with the 07 car of Bob Steffens who's in for the suspended Jim Hayes and uh, Steffens is currently running inside the top 10 in this 07 car, but he is the first to pit for green flag pit stops on lap 14 Nathan Ferguson, the race leader, pits on lap 15, exactly on the halfway mark. Here's Thurston Blood as he is holding up uh, Zach Gott, who's running in 16th place, I believe. Blood gets put into the wall by the 71 car and ending his race uh, pretty much immediately. So Thurston Blood, uh, that's not going to be that's going to be two no scores so far for him. Here's Claire Osier, who's still in the points in the top 20, but uh, well, probably won't be after this. Uh, skates off the road in car 28. Here's Brandon LaRoe in the uh, 33 car, the Afterburner Motorsports car. Not making too many friends out there, but uh, to be fair, there's a couple back markers that are worse about it than he is. Bobby Dollar is going to try to get around the 33 car, but breaks way too hard, way too late. Spins out. Would have expected he would have known better not to do that. Here's Mike Andrews in the 51 car, and uh, and he just takes out Ryan Griffin in the 18 car. Uh, Griffin was running in second because Sakura Matoko, you just saw going by there, had just made a pit stop. So, um, I don't think uh, Mike Andrews is going to be earning himself too many friends, and he'll probably earn himself a trip to the steward's office. Now, here is uh, Baxter Hamlet getting around the lapped car of Lang Chong Kun. He is two laps ahead of the six car. However, uh, the Chinese driver just turns the Englishman straight into the bridge wall. I don't really know what that was all about. That seemed a little ridiculous as well. There's Roger Kendall leaving the pits as if his day couldn't get worse. He just had a pit stop that lasted about, oh, a minute and a half. Cesar Villanova, the Brazilian driver in car number eight. Uh, well, they've had a lot of drama at the end of the S's, and it's all looked fairly similar as he gets an Ali Collada. Both are, they were battling for 17th place uh, at the time, I believe. Now, Brian Morris just left the pits, uh, just left the pits for his green flag pit stop. Off self to meet in that 58 car. Uh, he's racing for position with now, so... Morris is going to have a bit of competition there. Oh, Morris slides wide. He hits the side of Roger Kendall. Kendall doesn't look too happy about it. And he hits Morris, and both of them spin off. And, uh, well, I didn't really see that one coming, but after the day Roger Kendall's been having, I think he's more than frustrated. And after being just door-checked randomly by the 14 car that he wasn't really racing for position with, I think he just decided to take his frustrations out. Either way, I think that's going to be the second time in two races that we see Kendall in the uh, steward's office. Uh, and Brian Morris is, uh, well, not going to be uh, too happy with Kendall, clearly, because Kendall was, I think, a lap, uh, one or two laps behind him. Definitely not in the same lap. Interestingly enough, though, after that contact, Brian Morris didn't lose any positions on the track. Sure, he lost track position, but he lost uh, time to the cars in front of him, but didn't actually lose any positions. Jacob Card and the 133 car, I remember, said pitted uh, in the first lap. He's running 11th. Uh, Sakura Matoko in the 40 car is having a very lonely race here in second. There's really nobody around the Japanese driver, and she's pretty much just logging laps by herself. Really nothing happening around her. 
Buffy Borinaz, the uh, teammate to Thurston Blood, is going to go out of the race with mechanical difficulties. And why aren't you pulling it off the course? And here we are with Martin Baltno Jr. and Brian Morris. They are now battling for a position. Baltno may, uh, went off the course a couple of times. And now Brian Morris is going to pounce on him for 12th. And there is Tiffany Matthews in that 16 car. That's not really a factor here. In the closing stages of the race, we had a f slight fuel mileage concerns. Cars like Zach Gott and, uh, Jim and um, Bob Steffens pitted for fuel. Ryan Griffin in the 18 car has made a pretty good recovery drive, and now he's in podium contention along with Andre Canassa in the 05 car sitting in fourth place. I'd say this is a pretty good recovery drive for the Great Lakes Motorsports team and the uh, Bullen sponsored entry of Canessa. However, on the final lap of the race, here's Nathan Ferguson, and he's being very aggressive trying to get around Brandon LaRoe. Why you'd be doing that when you have a six and a half second lead is beyond me. I think if I had a six and a half second lead and it was on the last lap, I think I'd just cruise home. But uh, Ferguson clearly is uh, not just satis is not satisfied with doing that. He gets around LaRoe on the final corner, comes home to take home his first TM Lights victory. Ferguson basically dominated the race. He led all but three laps, and two of those laps were uh, Matoko leading after a back marker jammed up the four car, and the other one was, was due to a pit stop cycle. I didn't mention Thomas Cade in the 15 car at all. It's a great showing for a rookie driver coming from 23rd to 5th, and especially getting through all the carnage, but Cade uh, had a pitted fairly late, and it looked like that his fuel strategy worked out pretty well. Bob Steffens, only, the only position he lost at the uh, end of the race due to pitting late was to Cade, so uh, it's probably about where they were on pace. Troy Adams gets a pretty good finish, despite uh, having a lot of carnage all around him. Axel Anderson dropped back a little bit at the end. He had to pit for fuel as well. Jacob Card pitted on the first end of the first lap, and uh, clearly a unique pit strategy by the EV Racing team paid off. Ali Collada a pretty hectic day, uh, came home in 10th place. Despite spinning off a couple times, Brian Morris, um, also a very good run for him, despite getting in several incidents throughout the day, some of his own doing, some not. Bobby Dollar, uh, uh, I think he pitted late for fuel. Zach Gott, of course, probably would have been about 9th. Archer Harris, Claire Ossier managed to stand the lead lap, and she was the, the last car on the lead lap in car 28. Cameron Taylor, Afsal Tamid, Martin Baltno Jr., and Mark, Mark Blackwell and Mike Andrews all off the lead lap. I would also like to point out that Mike Andrews was invited to the steward's office, so he might end up losing that 20th place that he got. However, he did finish a lap ahead of 21st place, Brandon LaRoe.